Welcome to a new video by Geosystems. Today I want to show you how you can atmospherically correct satellite images by using the ATCO workflow for Imagine with the Eurus Imagine Spatial Modeler. Maybe you have already seen the other movie, how to use the ATCO workflow for Imagine on the basis of the dialogue. In this example, a Sentinel-2 multispectral image of San Francisco will at first be dehazed and thereafter atmospherically corrected with ATCOR2. Additionally, a haze map with different classes will be created. In comparison to the dialog option, here the whole workflow is automatically processed all at once. Thus, it is very efficient, it is optimized as the two processes of dehaze and ATCOR2 are done in one go. Oh, by the way, this satellite data has been simply downloaded by using the Sentinel-Made Simple Downloader of Geosystems. A short info how the Sentinel data is organized. Here in my folder, you can see the save directory. Save is the ESA specific format for their data. Today I'm interested in a granule 10 SEG, which shows the area of San Francisco. Generally, Sentinel-2 satellite images are provided as JPEG 2000 files, with one file for each band. In this folder you find the granules in which the JPEG 2000 images are stored. Ok, let's get this on. I create two folders, which I name Adcore Project and Adcore underscore Output. First of all, I want to show you the scene we are going to atmospherically correct. We can see that there is a lot of haze in the image. Here it makes sense to previously, in a first step, use the Adcore dehaze. I navigate to the top toolbox and select Spatial Model Editor to open the Spatial Model of View. From the Operators window here on the right, I open the group Geosystems Adcore. You can see several operators for the Adcore workflow. To dehaze our scene, I have to select the according operators and connect them. Thus, first I have to create the project and select the operator Create Adcore Project. I connect this with the next operator, run Adcore Dehaze. In comparison to the approach using Adcore for Imagine Dialog, here I can extend the spatial model with the next step, the Adcore 2. Therefore, I select the set Adcore parameters and run Adcore 2. With the Adcore workflow dialog, the Dehaze and Adcore 2 are split in two parts where I have to start the second part manually after the first one has finished. The spatial model for ATCOR enables me to select the processing parameters for both processes at once and get the two parts processed in one single workflow. Thus, hands-free in the meanwhile for other duties. Then I connect the operators with each other. The create ATCOR project, it creates a new project which I connect with the input port Adcor project in of the run Adcor dehaze. This executes the dehazing. Its project out, I do connect with the project in of the set Adcor parameters operator. Its parameters, relevant for Adcor 2, I set at last and connect the output port with the input port run Adcor 2 operator. This executes the atmospherical correction. For the first operator, Create Adcor Project. I select by double clicking on the port Adcor Project folder, my created project folder. For the Imagine file name, again double click, select the metadata file in the XML format. Thus, I move to the granule folder and select my 10 SEG granule. There is the XML metadata file. This is Sentinel specific. Next, I open the port sensor and select Sentinel-2, 13 bands, in a drop-down and click OK. Now, for the second operator, the run Adcor dehaze. Different ports have to be set. For the dehaze method, I change it to Auto. For the dehaze area, I select Land and Water Pixels. The dehazed image name shall be in the output folder. I type in the acquisition date, which is 2015 11 17, and underscore dehaze. The third operator is the set at core parameters. 
Here I do have to enable some ports in the properties on the right. Water vapor category, aerosol type, and value added products. They appear at my operator and I select for the water vapor category, US standard. For the aerosol type, auto. And for value added products, I check the mark and thus change to true. The fourth and last operator is the run at core 2. For the corrected image name, I select my output folder and name it 2015 11 17 and underscore at core 2. The atmospheric correction at core 2 is executed on a dehazed image. Do not forget to save the spatial model. Therefore, I go to File, Save As, and Save Spatial Model As. 2015 11 17 underscore create underscore dehaze underscore at core 2 into my project folder. Now the spatial model is ready to run. Therefore, I go to the Spatial Modeler tab and click on Run. An advert window pops up as we are in the free license mode of IDL. Just click on it. Depending on the power of your machine, the processing will take some minutes. While an ADCOR project based on a Sentinel-2 dataset is created, the following tasks are executed. It reads out the information from the metadata file, which comes in the XML format. It compiles a layer stack, either with 13 bands at 20 meter pixel size, or with four bands at 10 meter pixel size. This depends on the sensor you specify. In this case, the 13 bands on 20 meters. Important to mention at this point, the created project can be used for all three ADCOR processes, the hazing, ADCOR 2, and ADCOR 3. We see the process has finished successfully. The spatial model ran through. We also see a warning icon at the run at core dehaze operator and an info icon at the run at core 2 operator. Let's see what the special modeler messages window tells about these icons. I go to the view box and open the messages. The first entry is the warning for the dehaze process. No elevation file available. Dehazing without elevation file. This tells us that yes, we did not use a DEM. Well, we could do, but this is optional. The other entry is an information for the ADCOR2 process. The message let us know that the atmospherical correction has been executed on the basis of the dehazing result. This is done. Now I want to show you the result of the ADCOR dehaze. First, I go to the project folder. There I find a created folder named TOA Reflectance. Here is the layer stack which the program created from the original bands. I fit the layer to the window size and quickly have a look into the image metadata. You can see this is a layer stack of 13 bands with a spatial resolution of 20 meters. I take this original image to compare it now with the result of the dehaze process. Thus, secondly, I go to the output folder and select the dehazed image. You might already see a strong change. Let's compare. Therefore, I switch the swipe tool on. Have a look on the difference by yourself. I close the transition to load the haze map by dragging it into Imagine. Well, I will use the swipe tool once again. I want you to focus on this nice haze South San Francisco indicated with the arrow. We see that the ADCOR workflow calculated a map with different categories. Let's have a look into the attribute table. Here in blue is the class over water. ADCOR detected clearly haze. The haze map category changes over land and overall the haze is easily detectable with the eye. Let's have a look into the project folder. This Geosystems Adcore project file 
Never rename it. Next, I want to show you the calibration file in the text editor. It contains the sensor and image specific calibration parameters. As for Sentinel-2 data, a metadata import is provided. The calibration file will be prepared and written to the project folder. Finally, let us examine the log in a text editor. It contains detailed information about the executed process, such as the seen average global flux, reflectances, but also warnings and error messages. Just have a look by yourself. Also pretty important and informative, the Imagine Session Log. To access it, in Imagine go to File, Session, and open the log via the View Session Log button. It lists the single steps which have taken place or which actually happen live, if you keep this window open during processing. Well, I kept you waiting long enough about the result of AdCore 2. I am also curious. Let us have a look at the result. Now you can see the San Francisco scene atmospherically corrected. I will use the swipe tool another time. Now, using the Inquire cursor, I can compare the result of the atmospherically corrected image with the original image. The corrected image provides a surface reflectance spectra. You can easily calculate the surface reflectance in percent by dividing the pixel value by 100. This is the applied reflectance scale factor, which we previously have set for the advanced settings. Now I will examine the spectral profiles. Therefore, I select the Golden Gate part. It might be suitable for this purpose. The first profile is for the original uncorrected image. Thus, no dehaze nor atmospheric correction has taken place. I zoom further in and will pick the sports field. For the spectral profile tool, always the lowest layer is considered. This is why I moved them in the table of contents. I will compare this with the dehazed and AdCore 2 corrected image. The differences for the same spot are clearly to identify. Finally, what I do not want to keep from you is the value added products file. Let's have a look at it. I go to File, go to Open and select Raster as Image Chain. I select from the output the adcore 2 underscore FLX image file. Move to Image Chain and select Pseudo Color. I select the first layer and the NDVI natural in the color table. The first layer is my soil adjusted vegetation index, SAVI. In this video, you have learned how to use the ADCOR workflow for Imagine to dehaze and atmospherically correct the multispectral Sentinel-2 image with the spatial monitor. I hope this was helpful. For further information visit our homepage geosystems.de